Welcome to Aisha Scrum Tech YouTube channel, um, partnering with Agile Compass Consulting. So in this video, um, you're going to learn how to create user stories in Azure DevOps. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. All right, so on your company's computer, of course, you go to Azure DevOps here to be able to see all the projects, right? Or if you already know your project, good and fine, you just go to the project where you want to create that user story. And then um, for this, we're using the Aisha Scrum Tech and Agile Compass Consulting Collaboration um, you know, project. We're gonna go to board here. And um, here we're showing our work item view, right? So there are so many ways we can go about creating user stories. But we're going to look at two ways that we can create user stories in Azure DevOps. Okay. So on our work, um, on our board here, on our work items here, you can create a user story right from here. But I would like us to create our user stories from our board view. Okay. So on our board view, you see where you have new item. You can go on here and just click on that new item, and it will give you the option. Um, to create a user story. I know it says here product backlog item. That is just how Azure DevOps describes the user story when you are actually signed in into a Scrum board. Remember the very first video we did, you find out that you can create user stories. Uh, sorry, you can create, um, you know, your project um, either with a Scrum board, you can create a CMMI board, Agile board, basic board. So depending on what board you used, it the, the name, the user story, or refer to the user story in different terms, right? So for the Scrum board, you will usually see product backlog item, but that doesn't mean that this cannot be changed. Of course, your team can configure their board differently and switch things around, all right? So, but... um. You know, on the Virgin page and the Virgin board, this is what you're definitely going to see. So product backlog item, I'll just hit an add to the top. Okay. <clears throat> so um, to create your user story, that's what you would do. And then you, you, the first thing is you add a title here. So there are some key things that you need to make sure that you have on your user story. First thing is a title, a brief, you know, um, I'll say a brief statement very short to describe what is in that story. And then you're gonna describe the story fully on that description. And then you're gonna add your acceptance criteria to complete that user story, right? And then of course, if you are a Scrum team, definitely you wanna make sure that you add your priority level for this user story. And also you add the efforts. When I, the efforts here refers to the user story, um, you know, points, the story points for this user story. All right, so first things first, we're gonna click on the title. Let's just say we wanna create a user story about, um, let's say working agreement, right? Scrum Master, you're in a new team, you're using Azure DevOps, and you wanna create a user story for yourself to be able to track and make sure that you, your team actually creates or crafts a working agreement, okay? So the title here, we can have it as create or establish, whichever create team working <clears throat> agreement, okay? So that's our title. Anybody who looks at this title will understand what this user story is about. That's the essence of that uh, title bar, okay? And then for the user story, um, we all know, you know, the technique in which we write a good user story where we capture who the story is actually who is gonna benefit from this user story, right? The who, and then what that story is about. What are you building? What are you making, okay? And then the why, why are we creating this user story? Why is it important for us to create this user story for this um, you know, user, right? So for example, I'll say as a Scrum Master, <clears throat> okay, as a Scrum Master, I want to establish a working agreement <clears throat> with my Scrum team, right? We're working with a Scrum team 
in my scrum team to ensure clear communication, okay? We wanna be able to make sure that communication is clear, collaboration is effective, <clears throat> setting clear expectations, right? Basically, um, collaboration and a shared understanding of our norms, something of that nature. And a, a shared understanding of our norms. Norms here, we mean rules, right? All right, so this could be a working agreement. So as a scrum master, that's a who, okay? I want to establish a working agreement. Working agreement is a what? To uh, With my scrum team to ensure clear communication, collaboration, and shared understanding of our norms. So that's our why, right? And all of this is to ensure effectively, um, ensure that we work effectively together. So that's that's just um a sample of how you can write that user story. And then what could be some of our acceptance criteria? For example, how do we know that this is done, right? So um, of course we need to set up a meeting to define and document the working agreement. To define and document our working agreement. <clears throat> okay. What's the second thing we can think of doing um, during this session to ensure that you know um, this is actually done? We need to include key aspects. Include key aspects. Such as, okay, for example, when we were creating a user story, uh, sorry, uh, a working agreement, we want to make sure that things such as our meeting schedules, meeting schedules, <clears throat> um, communication channels, team value, Expected response time. Expected response time. Okay. We want to include key aspects such as this. And of course, the list continues. You can add all of that channels. Okay. You can add other items there that you want to be on your working agreement. A big thing as well is also conflict, conflict resolution. So I can say something like, mm, let's say address conflict resolution in your working agreement. All right, and then another thing could be ensure the working agreement is um, accessible. Of course, we wanna make sure it's accessible. It's somewhere where everybody can see it, all right? Okay, so let's just say, for example, these are the acceptance criteria we want to, you know, have in a user story that we are um, about to create, all right? So now we're gonna set the priority of this. We can set the priority as a one, which means it is really important. We wanna do it like, Make sure we do it like the sprint. This is part of our goal for the sprint. And um, I know when it comes to effort for this, of course, the team is using their time to create this. If your team doesn't actually uh, give out, you know, some capacity to account for meetings, um, I will definitely go ahead and add efforts to this one because the team is going to be involved in this. I've actually created working agreements with teams where we use over two hours to create a working agreement from scratch. It is a whole big project, okay? And in order to do it effectively, where you get the whole team to communicate, to collaborate, to discuss different items on there, you want to make sure that you're taking your time. And there are very good templates, okay, that you have in different whiteboards, um, Miro most especially, um, that you can use to create this working agreement and make it very collaborative so that everybody's voice is heard. Everyone feels heard. And you vote on what you want to agree on 
um, as part of your working agreement with the rest of the team. So it is, you know, everybody working together to create this, right? So everyone takes accountability. All right, so you can decide to add that story per year or not. It doesn't really, you know, it just depends on how your company works or your team works. So let's just say for every user story, we all know that we need to add the, you know, the story points to it, especially if it's a story that the team is going to work on. Let's just say we give this one a two, right? For the efforts, two hours, you know. All right. And so that's about it. We got everything that we need here for our user story. See? So we got everything that we need here. The only thing now you add, who is supposed to do this user story? You assign the person. I'm going to put myself there. So I'll take my name. Um, And then you can decide if your team has various states, you can decide what state this is going to be. You know, if it's not been refined, most teams will leave it as a new. If it's been refined, they have different statuses that they've created and configured for their boards. Okay. So um, that's about it, you know. And all you need to do is hit on the save button. If you want to hit and close, that's fine. If you just want to, sorry, if you want to save and close, that's fine. If you don't want to close it, you can just click on the drop down and you save it. Okay, very important. If you do not save it, I'm sorry, you're going to start from scratch. <laughs> All right, so let's hit save. Once we hit save, you see that we still have our page open and we have everything intact for our user story. So that is how you create a user story in Azure DevOps. All right, so a user story is right here. And um, <clears throat> you can also create a user story from the backlog side of the house. So you go to new work item here and the same thing you just hit here, at the top or at the bottom, whatever, all is, what is important is getting this out and actually documenting what needs to be documented and making sure that your user story is clear enough for everybody to understand. It doesn't matter who comes to look at this ticket, they need to be able to read it and understand what is going on, what needs to be created, who is it for, and why is that item being created, right? Or that feature being created. So that's another way you can create, um, you know, your work uh, item, or product backup item or user story. So that's about it for this video. Of course, even on your sprint board, there are a lot of ways that you can create user story. You can also go here and create user story. So, <clears throat> so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you need mentorship, please do not hesitate to contact us at admin and at aishascrumtech.com. Please, we provide level one, level two, and level three mm -hmm. services. We promise you, we are so passionate about this. We're so passionate about making other people's story better than ours. Um, you know, we all know what it is when you're new in this field or when you're struggling on the job in this field. And so we need to hold each other's hands. So please reach out to us if you need our services, if you want to, you know, join level one to get your hands wet and, you know, try to um, join the Scrum world, reach out to us. If you want to do level two where you're job hunting, we'll so we have support for that as well. And on the job as well, we do have support that we provide at mean at aishascrumtech.com. All right. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.